Hi guys, welcome back to the third episode of Cloud Security Engineering with Amazon Web Service or AWS. And I just wanted to take a moment to explain kind of why I haven't made a video in about a week. Um, it's not any writer's block or any, uh, any laziness, I hope, but our, our dog was just sick for a little bit, so we had to take care of that. And um, that took precedent over a lot of the things that I would be doing with my content. Um, so I know I promised a more technical video um, in the last one in episode two about bash scripting. But I think we should put that on the back burner for a bit. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions from people about the kinds of it, the kinds of careers that they can take, the kinds of career paths that they can take within security and especially the cloud. Now, there's two main ones that I want to cover today, and that's SecOps or security operations and security engineering. I want you guys to think at a high level that SecOps is more of an analyst role, right? You're going to be dealing with a lot of process procedure. And Sec Engineering, or Sec Eng, as it's shown here, is going to be um, engineering, but with the security mindset, right? So both have great responsibilities within the cloud um, in terms of their duties, but they're two completely different things. But the thing that makes it unique is that in normal physical security work, um, these might not cross paths as much as they do in the cloud. But in the cloud, you're going to have to have a lot of technical knowledge, especially in the security ops field, that you wouldn't have within the uh, physical security field, right? So now that we're in the cloud, there's gonna be a lot of resources and a lot of technical knowledge and conceptual knowledge that you're gonna to have to know if you wanna have one of these jobs, right? Security ops, but you're also gonna to have to master it if you're gonna have a job in security engineering. And I hope that this video today helps cover that stuff for you. And we're gonna have a part two as well where I actually show the resources of where each specific uh, specialization would live, but that'll be in part two. So I'll see you guys at the first slide. So if you're to get a job in SecOps or security operations, um, a mindset that you're gonna have to have is an analyst or process-minded uh, problem-solving mentality, right? So what that means is you're gonna have to be very analytical. And I say that with a grain of salt because you're gonna have to be very analytical for both specializations we're gonna be talking about today. But this is going to be the majority of your work is gonna be focused on process improvement within your security team and improving your security posture through process rather than uh, technical problem solving, right? So you're gonna take a policy, you're gonna create a procedure on top of that policy, and then you're gonna improve a process that your team can follow, whether they're technical or they're non-technical, that you can help improve your security posture. And just like in physical security, you're gonna to have to have knowledge of a SIM, right? So security information and event management system, and that's going to be something like uh, Alien Vault or Alert Logic or Splunk. And I really wouldn't worry too much if you don't know what any of those are. Uh, you're going to get a lot of on the job training about those kind of things. And those are what I like to call tribal knowledge, which is uh, they might be it might be knowledge that a specific company has, right? Or you, but you're not going to have to know that for the broad uh, atmosphere of of security in general. And oftentimes when you're in SecOps or you're an analyst, you're going to be known as the eyes on glass. You're going to be looking at the compliance scores. You're going to be looking at vulnerabilities. Um, within the cloud and you're going to be having to interface these kind of vulnerabilities and these kind of issues with uh, management of some kind okay so keep that in mind you're going to have to be the person that's constantly looking at the vulnerabilities constantly looking at all these things and thinking of ways that you can predict and and create reports to send to management and again you're gonna have to have a procedure based mind for this you're going to have a lot of procedure based work where you're going to be following a specific procedure, something that's been set down by policy, right? And you're going to have to create a, a semi-technical or maybe even a really technical solution or process to how you go about enabling and enacting that procedure in accordance with that policy. Now, here's where it differs between normal security. And when I say normal, I mean physical security where you have a data center, right? And there's some overlap, but for the most part, this is where it's going to differ. When you're in SecOps or security operations in a physical data center, you might not need to have any technical skills whatsoever. All you might need to know is to look at the SIM tool, pick up vulnerabilities, and then put them through a process where those vulnerabilities get remediated through risk acceptance, patch management, or anything like this. But in the cloud, everything is so technically based that you're going to have to have conceptual knowledge about the technical things that you're doing within the cloud, right? And when I say that, I mean, you're gonna have to have conceptual knowledge of how things put, uh, 
fit together. Like I did in episode one, you're going to have to know what an EC2 instance is. You're going to have to know what a VPC is. You're going to have to know what a subnet is. You're going to have to know how those things connect. That's going to help you interface with teams like DevOps or security engineering, teams that are more technically sound or technically focused. And it's going to help you not only get respect in their eyes where they'll remediate the vulnerabilities that you bring up, but it's going to help you understand what their solutions might be and how you can better fix your process. And that leads us into the last point, which is going to be strong communication skills. As a SecOps lead or just a security operations analyst, you're going to have to have really strong communication skills so that you can communicate those vulnerabilities that you've found to a CISO or a team lead that then can communicate them to management. So you're going to have to be that middle ground. You partially know technical skills. You know a lot of process work, right? So you're going to take those technical vulnerabilities that you're finding. And you're going to have to put them in a, and I'm saying this with air quotes because it's not in any way dumbed down, but a dumbed down way that you can then produce those reports to send to management, right? And along these same lines, you're, when you're in security operations, you're by no means a non-technical person at all. That's not, that's not what, I'm, what I'm getting at at all, but there are different ways you can do the job, right? You could be an analytical mind where you're trying to do process improvement at all times. And I suggest that you try to do process improvement, whether you're in security ops or security engineering. I think it's just a general good baseline for you to have and a good mindset for you to have. But when you're in security ops, you're mainly going to be focused on what vulnerabilities are coming in and out and how do I fix those vulnerabilities? And how do I send those patchwork or those patch notes to the security engineering team or the DevOps team to fix those vulnerabilities? Now, with security engineering, or SecEng, as I put it here, and you'll see a lot, there's a lot of, I don't know, a lot of romanticism around this career, right? You're going to be doing engineering work. You're going to be doing that technical problem solving. But you're also going to have to be very persistent and intuitive thinking. And you're going to have to be able to solve problems that might not have a white paper or a walkthrough guide for you to solve, right? You're going to have to use your base knowledge to then solve other issues that you might come across within your infrastructure or um, within your contract or whatever you're working on there, right? And what I really suggest for this kind of field, and I'm just getting into this field as well, is to be proficient in one or more programming languages. Now, the ones that I found work the best are are the most common in AWS would be TypeScript, which is native to tools in AWS, such as the SDK, Software Development Kit, or the CDK, Cloud Development Kit. Python, which is really good for creating lambdas within AWS, and it's a, just a really good base, not, uh, base language to have in cybersecurity. Or Node. And I say Node because Node is a really good mix of TypeScript. And also, a lot of people, I found in my experience, that a lot of people that know or can type or um, can code in Node, have a really good grasp of core programming fundamentals, and they'll transfer over really well to a field like security engineering, where you need to know a lot about, or a little about a lot. Now, in terms of security operations, where you had that conceptual knowledge, in security engineering, you're not going to have to know everything, but you're going to have to have a lot of practical knowledge of the resources and solutions that you're trying to implement, whether it's with the SDK or the CDK, you're going to have to know what connectivity is like between a VPC and a subnet uh, on a certain IP range. You're going to have to know, how do I install a WAF? And these aren't things you're going to have to know out of the box, right? You're going to use that technical problem-solving mindset that you have to find out solutions for these. The good thing about AWS is there's a lot of white papers that you can use to solve these problems. There's also a lot of gray areas in those white papers where you're going to have to use your own technical problem-solving and your intuitive thinking and, and just general persistence to find the answers to those questions, right? And it takes a special kind of person to sit there and look at code for five hours and get the same error over and over and over again, but still persist and be like, I can find this solution here, or I can do this to check my errors there. And that's the kind of thinking that you're going to have to have. Now, security engineering doesn't lack process-minded um, thinking, but you also have to be independent, right? Because a CISO or a head of information security can create a process or a procedure but that process might not help you find or solve a solution that hasn't been solved yet, right? So you're going to have to use, again, that technical problem solving to take that process and say, here, here are the things that I know I have to do, but here's where my task deviates, and that's where I have to use my intuitiveness, right? And again, strong communication is a huge plus. And I know a lot of people won't say this in the engineering field, but I think a lot of disconnect comes between management and security engineering. When a really good security engineer or an engineer in general 
creates a really amazing solution, but they're not able to communicate what that solution is and what kind of business value it provides. And that's where they fall to the wayside kind of, right? Because I could create a half-ass, so to speak, I'm saying that with air quotes, solution, but if I'm able to describe it in terms that upper management and my CISO will understand, I'm gonna get a lot more praise than someone who provides a amazing solution, but can't tell you the business value of it or can't tell you why they did it, right? It could be the most amazing code you've ever written, but if it doesn't provide any business value and you don't know why you did it, it's not gonna provide any value whatsoever to upper management. And at the end of the day, I know we like to all think we're technical problem solvers and we're in cybersecurity because we just wanna be the smartest and fill our ego, right? But we're trying to solve problems for business, uh, for businesses, right? And if those solutions that we're creating aren't creating business value, I think that's where a lot of security engineers or engineers in general um, kind of lose some of their traction within the organization. I know this was pretty brief. Um, it was a lot of conceptual knowledge, not based around what we've been usually doing with our series so far. I know it's been a short series, but this is the knowledge that you're going to have to know. So you can pick one of those two specifications to go into or special specializations. So you can focus either your analytical mind or your technical mind. There's a lot of overlap, like I said. Security engineers are still that analytical, they have the analytical mind. I think any security professional is going to be an analytical thinker. But a SecOps uh, specialist might not have the same technical prowess that a security engineer might have, right? Or a security engineer might not have the same forward-facing communication that a, security, or, uh, that a SecOps specialist may have. And I hope in the part two of this third episode here that we can really dive into the actual resources within Amazon that you're going to have to be in charge of as either a security engineer or a SecOps specialist. And I hope that adds more context for you guys. As always, I hope you guys have a good night and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.